Hi guys, welcome back. Today we've got a bit of a different video. I'm going to talk to you about five tips on how to improve your workflow in SolidWorks. These tips are based on my experience working with the software and how I've developed my workflow over the years. It's entirely up to you whether you want to adopt them or perhaps you could customize them and make them work for you. But I thought it was important to share some of these points. Um, there's been a couple of comments on the videos where people say, um, you know, perhaps I'm doing things a bit quickly. But to be honest with you, it's second nature. Um, so I must apologize for that. Um, hopefully you can pick up a few of these tips and it will increase uh, your efficiency and improve your workflow. Um, but practice is going to be key as always. So, okay guys, let's uh, jump in and take a look. Right then, five tips to improve your workflow in SOLIDWORKS. Let's go. Number one is design intent. And I've touched on this uh, in the previous boat model. And all this means is um, have a clear direction in your head of how something is gonna be modeled. This will save you loads of time, umming and ahhing, not being productive and um, it'll improve your modeling no end. For example, let's take this mouse. I'm looking at it thinking, how is this gonna be modeled? Would it be an extrude, a revolve? But I'm not saying for a minute that you would know this for everything um, because it takes practice. But if you adopt this um, over time and you keep practicing, before you know it, you'll be having an idea in your head of how you'd go about modeling something. Um, and, and this starts before you even get in the software. And this brings us on to number two, which is be organized. This is um, more sort of related to the software. So if we just pull a drawing, uh, pull apart, sorry. Um, this, is, this is very important in the feature tree. So we're talking about not having redundant features uh, redundant sketches keep it nice and clean and simple because there's always a time when you will have to go back to parts and make modifications and the tidier the feature tree is the tidier the model is the easier it will be so I'm speaking from experience the more organized you are with the feature tree and the part modeling the better it'll be for everybody involved Number three is be efficient. So this is kind of related to design intent, but I, th I felt it was important to have it as a separate point. And this is um, being smart, you know, in life, we don't want to really do things that are unnecessary or, or um, waste our time. So be efficient in the modeling. So this is about are the parts symmetrical? Can you model half of the part, do essentially half of the work and mirror it to double your output? And this is a common theme for things like fasteners, bosses, snap fits. If you've got multiple features in a part, say bosses, um, can you pattern them? Can you copy them? Um, just just save your work guys just be smart about it um i've learned over the years you know just be smart where you can and uh if you can't then just just put the work in number four understand the tools now this one is um this one takes a bit more time i've got to be honest but you will get there with practice this is about understanding the uh, why something will or won't work. So a feature, say for example, in SolarWorks, what, why or why it will not work for you. Um, and this is a deeper knowledge understanding of this, the software. So um, the more you do it, the more you'll understand. And the reason this is so important, once you understand why and why something won't, won't work for you, you can then understand where you can apply it to what features and what parts and it'll improve again your efficiency because you're not wasting time using features that you can't create because you you don't understand how they work 
So your success rate, your hit rate with features is going to increase significantly because you understand what is required to make the feature work. So you're not wasting time. I hope that makes sense. Of course, if you've got any questions, just drop it in the comments and I'll, um, I'll be happy to help. Number five is hotkeys. This one um, is very applicable. Um, a few people commented saying, you know, I'm working too fast for them to follow. I'm sorry. I use hotkeys, it's second nature. Um, it's worth noting, I only use a standard keyboard and mouse. That's all I've ever used um, as a CAD user. But I found when I got my head around hotkeys and I um, adopted them, um, it really did speed up my workflow. So let's um, let's just take a quick look then. Let's come into SolidWorks. So this is if you want to set up some hotkeys yourself. Um, I'll just run through the process quickly. So you go tools, customize. Come over to keyboard if we're looking at hotkeys and you see category here we've got loads of different categories um what i find helpful is if you come up to the top here where it says category and you can filter them first one we're going to look at is insert so this is the first one i did was insert sketch so if we scroll down there we go i've set up insert sketch as s on the keyboard so if you select the plane press s on the keyboard it'll insert sketch um very handy and quick let's have a look what other ones we've got here we've got view i know there's a couple of standard ones in view i use spacebar is view orientation this is probably standard for you guys so you can use it right off the bat hit spacebar in model space and it'll give you the view orientation option uh, also f zoom to fit i believe that's a standard one so hit f on the keyboard that will zoom extends so the other ones we want to look at are file so come up here and go file and it's browse recent documents so r and when I found out this one, this is a standard one again, um, really helpful. So all you've got to do is uh, if you're in model space or if you're about to start up, hit R on the keyboard and it'll browse. It'll give you a separate window and it'll browse all your recent documents. Super handy um, if you're working through loads of parts. Um, really helpful. So give definitely give that one a go. And the last one we're going to look at today is tools. And this one's smart dimensions, so D, D, there we go. There's a couple in here. Smart dimension tools. So this you, uh, so D, so if you want to add a dimension in model space or drawing space, actually, just hit D and it's super helpful, um, super quick, because you can just apply dimensions to parts um, really quickly. Um, and yeah, one thing I'd say with this, uh, it's probably worth what I did when I set mine up. I sat down, I had to think about it. Think about um, features or tools that you use a lot of the time. So um, for me, it's your um, insert sketch, smart dimension. Uh, I tend to trim a lot, power trim a lot in sketches. Um, so I've actually got that one set up as well. I just didn't uh, highlight it today. But yeah, spend a bit of time, think about what you do a lot of, write it down and then um, create some hotkeys. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it for today. So would uh, would love to hear some feedback. Let me know, please, if um, if you found this video helpful at all. The, the reason I did it was purely because I thought it would be helpful to a lot of you out there. Um, so, you know, let me know. Are you going to give any of this a go? Um, are you going to set up some hotkeys for yourself to try and improve your efficiency? I, I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, and as always, if you've got any questions, um, drop me a comment. Um, and all, as always, I'll try and help. Um, and yeah, if you like the video, please like and uh, subscribe because as always, we've got more content coming. So that's it for this week, guys. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.